Pros, Kill Model Builders and Aficionados. Welcome to the fourth episode of the Corsair build. In this video I'm going to fully assemble the airframe, which means that we have a lot of ground to cover. So let's start with getting the cockpit together, which is a piece of cake if you ask me. Excellent, excellent and again excellent fit. Most of the tools and materials I use you can find in the description. Before closing the fuselage, I had to paint the tail wheel well in glossy blue. And to get a bit more definition, I highlighted the frame with lighter version of the base color. Like a glove. Man, I don't want to sound like a fanboy, but this kit puts part of my stash in great danger never to see the light of day. Anyhow, let's put the fuselage half together, again using a combination of slow and fast settings plastic cements. After the fuselage is in one piece, I can get the instrument panel shroud upgraded, painted and weathered. First, the eyebrows from the kit take their places. And then I made two cables that I was able to discover on some pictures. Those I made out of soldering wire. I attached them with super glue and then I did the masking tape cable tie deal, which is very effective in my opinion. To paint the shroud I will use Mr. Surfacer 1500 Black. I will use it not only as a primer but also as the mine cover. I will use that also on some other details. Now allow me to tell you about my Patreon page. If you choose to support the channel on Patreon for only one dollar a month you will get early access to my videos and you can watch them ads free. Also, I post updates of my current builds every other day. Furthermore, you can have high resolution wallpapers with the finished models. And on top of that, you will get a discount for my merchandise. Once again, for only $1 a month. The link of my Patreon page is in the description. Using satin black with a drop of white I will do some fading effect on the shroud, just to give it a bit more interesting appearance. For the cables I am using acrylic paint. In my paint rack, the closest to what I have seen on the pictures is the desert sand from Life Color. For the cable ties, I chose medium grey color.
and with the same color I did some light dry brushing. Here is a small challenge for you guys. Let's see if we can get this video past 1000 likes in the first 48 hours after I upload it. Go and hit that like button. To highlight the various edges and the buttons on the eyebrows, I used grey watercolor pencil. And a touch of red to spice things up a bit. I had to cut the base of the gun sight a bit because the Aztec sheet was in the way. Then in an attempt to get some cool looking projector, I painted the bottom of the gun sight in clear orange and some silver on top of it. My idea was that due to the transparency of the part, the projector will appear somewhat orange. It did not work very well. After all, not all experiments give good results I guess. Using CA glue I carefully attached the gun sight to the instrument panel. Once the part was secured in position I painted the padding in brown so it looks like leather. Next I punched a disc out of clear acetate sheet and this will be the reflective screen that the pilots actually look at. To give it the appearance of thick glass, I painted the sides with green marker. To complete this section I installed what I think is an armor glass and highlighted its edges with the grey watercolor pencil. Now let's move on to the assembly of the airframe. First goes the windshield part of the canopy. Then I moved on the center wing section. Here it is important not to forget to drill the holes for the fuel tanks and those on the outer wings that are for the edge bars. As you can see it is pretty smooth sailing which makes him wonder why do I buy kits that present me with unnecessary challenges from beginning to the end. Well, I guess I can appreciate the good kits much more this way. In case you wonder why I switch between different plastic cements, it is because of the different work time that I have at my disposal. The yellow top is a lot slower and allows me to pick the part from the bench and position it with time to spare. The purple top is the opposite and dries almost instantly. It is extremely useful when you have the parts together and you simply put a drop of glue in the joint and that's it. In between there is the blue top which is your go to cement if you want to have just one. Obviously, a little bit of sanding is necessary here and there. The next step is to apply the rivets to the model. I will not go into details here because I have a dedicated tutorial on the subject. If you are interested, you can find the link in the description. I understand that some people find riveting unrealistic and so on. But on my models I find it appropriate, most of the time that is. So there is no point in arguing about personal preferences.
After I was done riveting, I resumed the assembly. Here I had my only issues with the kit so far. I cannot confirm if it was the kit or I did something wrong. But I got a small step at the joint. Please comment if you have built this kit and you can share some information about this area. It was not that bad and after a bit of filling and sanding everything was ok. Thanks for watching this far. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Leave a comment in the comment section and go watch more of my videos. Until next time, happy modeling!